Good morning. It is Monday, August 20th, and I'm in my classroom. I um, went and observed my mentor teacher to see how she did the lesson that we're doing today. Um, and so let me take you guys through it. So first of all, first of all, our general prompt today is write a poem or story that begins with the word hello. And I've decided, <clears throat> go back and forth here. So I've decided that I am only going to allow three students to share. Um, I hate to limit it, but sometimes it can take a lot of time away. Um, and I'll just let different students share each time. So yeah, that's what I'm planning on doing with that. And then we are going to do group stations. So let me show you that. Let me turn you back around. All right, so I found a timer because I'm only going to give them 10 minutes. And this way it displays on the board like really, really big so they can see how much time they have. And so this is what they're going to do. So my team teacher made this worksheet. So they have four different pieces of propaganda, World War II propaganda. And for each one, they are going to be saying what is the main quote on the poster, exactly what it says, um, who is the intended audience, and it just can't be like the reader or the viewer. They have to be specific. Um, how is ethos used? How is pathos used? What feeling is felt? And how is logos used? Um, and not all of them will have all three pieces, so they are going to have to collaborate with each other and determine um, which ones it has and then explain. And then in your own words, explain what the author of the poster is trying to convince you of. And then is the poster effective in persuading the audience? And so then let me show you our different pieces. So I just have them around the room. And I think what I'm going to do is like not let them get up, but just like pass the folders around. So I just have them in these little cheap folders that I have like as extra for students who don't have any. So this is group one and this is their piece. Okay, so it's just like Nazi and uh, like a two-headed monster, Nazi in Japan. And then it says, stop this monster that stops at nothing, produce to the limit. So it's trying to like increase production. Um, this is your war. Group two, I gave a man. Will you give at least 10% of your pay in war bonds? And that's like really big pathos right there. Group three. It can happen here, so unless we keep them firing, so that's just, you know, um, trying to get people to get into the draft and, you know, also production and, and things like that. And then we have, gee, I wish I were a man. I joined the Navy. Be a man and do it. So that's uh, pretty much um, guilt is what they're trying to do there. I cannot think this morning. So up here what I have up here uh, my team teacher did this so I thought it was a really good idea just to keep them um, from getting confused sorry about the glare it says when writing persuasively ethos show me you're the expert pathos make me feel something and logos give me evidence facts statistics and research and then this is what we have for the week which I kind of went over last week so group stations independent practice we're doing the first um, chapter of the novel a test and then a writing assessment so I went through some of the practice that they had last week with the writing about um, you know convincing their parents to take away their curfew or whatever and several of them so like a lot of them got it and understood um, so that gave you know that that was good that we had only had like that practice and most of them understood hopefully after today it'll be a little bit more concrete and um, you know they're going to be working together and if I'm going to tell them if you don't agree with what people in your group are putting down you put down what you want to put down but this is not necessarily independent practice you need to be working collaboratively um, and use this advantage right now so we're going to do that and I'm excited I love oh, excuse me I love group work I think it's so beneficial and yeah and so we're going to give them 10 minutes per station and I, when I went to observe my team teacher um, that was perfect. That was a perfect amount of time because those who finished early, they didn't finish too early, so they got a chance to put everything back in the folder. And it get, gave those who were a little bit slower, it gave them plenty of time. So and they had to have every section filled out. So, yeah, that's what's today. Um, I totally forgot yogurt this morning. I walked out of the house and left my son's juice. 
on the counter. I, I woke up late. <laughs> I woke up late this morning, so I feel like I'm a little bit all over the place. So anyway, I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, I have some things that I need to grade, so I'm going to do that, and then I'll check in with you guys later. Good morning. It is Tuesday, August 21st. Um, I feel like I was really frazzled yesterday. I feel like I seemed really frazzled, but that's because I was really frazzled yesterday. <laughs> um, I don't know, just Monday is like completely throwing me off. It's like I have to remember how to teach and do things. So anyway, today is Tuesday, and today we are going to be doing some independent practice with Ethos, Pathos, and Logos. Um, first of all, let me show you what my journal is going to be today. So I'm really excited about this one. When I saw it online, I was super excited. So it says, um, this house is an enchanted little house. You're a real estate agent for magical homes. And then I love that picture. I just think it's so cute and pretty. Um, it would be my dream to live in a little house like that because I just think it's gorgeous. But anyway, um, I really like to, like, I don't want them to ever expect what kind of journal they're going to get. So I always just like to mix it up. Um, and I want to add some with more pictures. And eventually I want to add some with like videos and stuff. Um, but yeah, anyway, so let me show you what we're doing today, independent practice. So yesterday we did the group work. Today we are going to be giving them these sheets and it's from Stacy Lloyd. I don't know if this is, we found it on the internet. My team teacher did, so I'm not quite sure how to find it. Um, but anyway, it starts out with this page, and it's just giving them um, another introduction, a little bit more detail about Aristotle um, than the Prezi did. And then it goes ethos, pathos, and logos, and then gives a little example. Um, oh, and it says uh, you can include a combination of these three elements, persuasive, da, 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 da. try to subtly weave in all three in your persuasive writing. Anyway, I thought that was really good because in many different... Um, ways of saying the same thing as possible I like to try to incorporate that because you know you never know what's going to click with different people um, so on this side we have let's focus on ethos it gives some more in-depth detail about ethos some more examples and then here they're given um, an example and they have to determine whether it is or is not ethos and then explain which is huge and then it says for each of the following scenarios, write your own persuasive sentence using ethos. So that's another good way to practice. Um, this, this page, same thing, focuses on pathos, and they have to determine. And then um, 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 this side is the logos, which they have to do the same thing. Oh, this is a little bit different. Oh, yeah. Uh, this one they have to determine whether it is effective or not. That's interesting. I didn't notice that. So, and then they have to explain. So, I think that's really, really good. And then, um, there are three examples. And honestly, we are only going to be grading for their examples because we just don't want to, like, overwhelm ourselves with grading. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to be really, like, grading on their examples. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and I got my EF money today. Yay! So, I can actually start, like, you know, getting things that I need that I couldn't buy previously. Um, it's really overcast today. So that's why it kind of feels like really dark in my room. Anyway, I'm going to eat some yogurt. Let me show you the yogurt that I got. I'm super excited about it. It's like August and I already feel super fall. Okay, so it's pumpkin pie. It's Greek yogurt pumpkin pie. This is the Dan and Light and Fit kind. Um, I ordered like a like a case of it, but they didn't have it. So um, the awesome thing about Walmart pickup or whatever is if they don't have what you ordered, they'll give you like something the same value or better value and only charge you for like what you order if that makes sense so I ordered like a, a four pack of these and they didn't have it so they just gave them individually and of course anything individual is going to be more expensive than if you get it in the pack so anyway thought that was awesome I'm really excited I hope it's good I love Greek yogurt and I love everything pumpkin so I hope it's good but anyway I'm going to chill out I'm going to get everything organized and I will catch up with you guys later oh by the way I didn't talk yesterday. I didn't like update you yesterday afternoon. The group activity worked really, really well. They were all really engaged and I think it really did help to solidify some things. Um, so it's really cool because last year I just felt like, I felt like I didn't do anything. I felt like I didn't teach anything and I guess I might have, but I didn't see it, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know. So 
to already feel like I'm actually teaching them something is really awesome and I'm excited to see what their test is going to show and then the writing assessment is going to show um, so yeah I'm really excited oh and the, another reason why we decided to only grade like the the three tasks at the end of the um, independent practice is because we're grading a test and that has some writing components on a Thursday and then the writing assessment Friday so just to keep ourselves from getting overloaded with grading that's why we're only grade three so anyway okay I'm gonna eat I'm gonna get organized and I will catch up with you guys later oh I'm sorry one more thing Ugh. so yesterday um we are part of the like the new teachers have to do a new teacher academy thingamajig um and our person who was putting that on for us came by yesterday and she brought us this book it's teach like a pirate by Dave Burgess I think is how you pronounce that. So I'm really excited about it. She said it's really, really good. Um, increase student engagement, boost your creativity, and transform your life as an educator. So I'm really excited to read it. I love any type of like um, professional development books. So I'm excited about this. Now I will for real catch up with you guys later. Hey guys. Um, so today is actually Thursday. I did not have a chance to vlog yesterday because we had a PLC in the morning. Um, with my team and that always tends to run over just because we have you know just a lot to talk about but it's good it's like very productive um, so I didn't get a chance then and then we also had the English department PLC that afternoon so I didn't get a chance to vlog so anyway yeah I'm catching up with you today so first of all I'm so excited my principal emailed me um, during the day and said hey come see me as soon as you get a chance and so I was like oh my gosh what did I do I was trying to like overanalyze everything that I had possibly done that day that I could be getting in trouble for um, but actually it was very good so she called me to her office and I already have it set up now but I got an Apple TV so as you can see let me show you it's not the best setup ever but that little box has to be visible so we just have it taped up and all the cords because we had it like cords were just like everywhere and it was crazy so um, we have it taped up right there I might end up moving it down a little bit so you don't see all that but for now it's fine all the other cords are taped up behind it um and then i also got an ipad to be able to stream to it so <clears throat> it is red tagged so it's not technically mine but i do have that and it's like a little mini like look how big it is it's so small so i'm super excited about that so yeah um our tech person came and hooked it up for me and i don't really have use for it like today because we're taking a test today so, but I am very excited that that's, I mean, I can use that for like, um, I'm changing my bell work situation and I'll explain that later, but for one of the days we have like a video that they watch and then respond to. So I can have the actual PowerPoint up on my Promethean board or smart board and then have the video playing on the TV. And then I can also have that playing announcements just random announcements and stuff like that so it is going to be very useful and I'm very excited to have it also whenever I need to play a YouTube video I can just pull it up right there so I'm super excited about that um, very 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 thankful that's awesome um, and then yeah today let me show you the test the test is I'm slightly concerned let me show you. we've been going over ethos pathos and logos for the past few days so their test for that is today and my team teacher and I just kind of pulled from like um, random things to like create this test it's pretty much all short answer and like two multiple choice questions so it is going to be difficult and it's going to be a little bit difficult to grade but I think it'll be fine so let me show you all right so we uh, shrunk it down so that it wouldn't be so much paper but on this side they have an answer key and the answer key goes to these questions so as you can see they're gonna have to fill in the blank and we mark this one out because we didn't go over that this is a little small so I'm, I am a little bit concerned about my students who um, need bigger print but I think I can get them the master copy and, and have that for them um, and then the back it's all short answer so here they are given a scenario and um, they have to write an example using ethos pathos and logos and then write what they used right here so if they use pathos 
to be convincing for this scenario, and they have to write pathos, and both of those things have to match up. And there are eight of those, and then on this side, they are given a scenario, and they have to um, identify whether it's ethos, pathos, or logos, and explain. And then on this right here, this is full size. Um, okay, I see what she did. All right, so this is basically a, a passage. There are two passages, and they're um, both of an argument about uh, alternative school. Um, so students who get in trouble for something either go into alternative school or just letting them go through the system and not really giving them any rehabilitation. So anyway, there are two different arguments on both sides here. And so what they're going to do is this is like the first article. And so they are going to have to um, answer these analysis questions. So was the author attempting to persuade the reader to believe? What appeals to logic, ethos, pathos, or logos? What emotional appeals? What fallacies um, does the selection contain? And how persuasive is the selection? So for both passages, for this one and this one, this is the second one. This is one and then two. They're going to have to answer um, these questions. And they're going to be very different. So I actually think that it's... Uh, very good test. I think that it is a very well-rounded test um, and so if they don't have time today because today is picture day I've already gone and taken my picture I didn't have to worry about taking a class thank God first um, first period planning is like the best um, but anyway first period might run over a little bit due to pictures and getting everybody in just during first period so um, yeah that might run over just a little bit so some of our other classes might be squished a little bit um so we are going to let them start on it today if they don't finish they're going to be able to finish tomorrow and then when they get done tomorrow we will then have them get their the scholastic scope article the kids affected by hitler or whatever kids who escaped hitler and then give them like a graphic organizer for ethos pathos and logos and have them go ahead and like start filling that out and then Monday is when they will actually write their essay. So we were just going to give them, like Friday was going to be, you read the article and you write the essay. But since picture day might throw a kink in how long they have to take their test, um, we are going to let them finish up tomorrow and then start on their writing assessment and um, just let them do a graphic organizer, if that makes sense. So that way we have something for early finishers to do and yeah so I think that's gonna work out really really well um, let me show you guys let me see if I can find it really quickly hang on okay so I don't have it printed out yet so I'm just gonna show you here um, it's rhetorical pills graphic organizer and it kind of gives them a snapshot of what ethos is and then so they're going to find examples in our reading passage um, and then definition on words I don't know that we're gonna worry too much about that I really just want them finding text evidence of using pathos um, I mean, ethos, and then pathos, and then logos. And this is from Brittany Bechtel on Teachers Pay Teachers, and it was a free download. So that is awesome. And this is, it looks really nice. It gives them plenty of room. It clearly labels. So I really like this graphic organizer. And if you're using uh, ethos, pathos, or logos, um, or rhetorical appeals to, re to write an article, I highly suggest using this because I just think that it's really really good now let me show you guys what I'm planning on doing for um, my bell work from here on out the reason why I'm changing my bell work is because I kind of feel like I'm not hitting some of my grammar stuff and and while you know no I don't put all of my stock into grammar I still need to hit it in some type of way if that makes sense like I don't know I just feel like I'm not hitting as many standards as I need to be hitting um I don't know that and I, it just worries me um so I'm going to change it up a little bit and I, I kind of feel like I, while they need to write every day um I kind of feel that they're getting a little bit like even in week three they're getting a little bit like oh. so anyway let me just show you what I'm planning on doing this is from Presto Plans I think this is her um, uh, bell ringer, like this is the fourth one. 
let me show you. My computer is extremely slow. All right, so this is just one example. I'm just going to show you one week's example. So Monday, picture prompts. Examine the image and complete one of the tasks. So it's always the same task. They can either use the image as part of a fictional story, describe it using vivid detail, or write a personal memory. Um, and the picture is always different. These three options are always the same, but the picture is always different. And then for this one, it's... Um, they have to correct the spelling, punctuation, and grammar errors. And this is the best way for students to learn grammar. I know that a lot of people do it in different ways. Like Laura Randazzo has like the mug shots and she gives them a, um, a sentence and they have to like write it correctly. That's the best way to practice grammar because you're actually using it. You're not teaching grammar stuff in isolation so and I think it's also because it's a text message this is really like concrete for them and they're able to relate to it so they have to correct each one of these lines and um, and then it gives you a slide with the correct answers and then Wednesday word choice this one is awesome this one I'm actually most excited about because I just think that this is extremely beneficial in improving their writing so they're given two sentences, and they have to, first of all, identify the adjectives, adverbs, and verbs in the sentence, and then make them stronger. So it's hitting two things right there. They have to identify what they are, and then they have to make them a little bit stronger. And then it, it doesn't really give correct answers. It just gives two possible responses, which I think is super awesome. And then Thursday, this is the day that I think I'm going to like replace this with the journal prompts that I'm using and just have them turn those in so they only turn in one to me um, or they only write one like that to turn into me to put into their portfolio because this is persuasive position and it has them like it gives them um, an issue and they have to write for two minutes and then they have to prepare like a debate whatever and then um, then they then they actually debate with a student and to me like while I think that is awesome if I were to do that I would want to devote class time to it like that be like part of the lesson I don't want it to be bell work only because I don't want I just feel like that would be more difficult to bring them back in and for me like when I when I want them to what I want them to do for bell work is to come in and work on something individual and if we do something collaborative I want that to be part of class like if that makes sense so I think um, but, but if I do use these which actually would be good for ethos, pathos, and logos, I won't have them do this. I'll just have them write a response using ethos, pathos, and logos, if that makes sense. Um, but I do think that's really, really cool, and it's actually something that I would like to use as an actual lesson. And then, um, then Friday film clip, this is what I was talking about using the TV for. So it always gives you a link to a YouTube video, and then it gives you um, a topic to, or a prompt to write about. So. And then it, um, so she gives you all of that for an entire year, and she also gives you um, the, like, sheets to print out for students. And the way my team teacher does it, she uses, like, I think the version, like, the third version or whatever, and this is the fourth version. And so I, she, what she did was she, she shrunk them down so she could put two weeks on one sheet. And every two weeks, the students turn it in, and they get a test grade for that as long as everything is filled out. So I think that is really awesome, um, and that's what I'm going to start doing. And I think it will be a lot more manageable. And so whenever they – so, like, every Thursday, they do turn in a journal entry to me, but – it won't be like they're writing one every day. Does that make sense? So, yeah, I'm excited about that. So I'm still getting data. It's just a little bit less work for everybody involved, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Ugh. I'm so hot. I need to turn my air on. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about that. I think it'll really work out extremely well. Um, oh, and she also has all this in task cards. So if you didn't want to use it for bell work... You could use it for task cards, which is actually really, really cool. And that might be a really good idea. I need to talk to my team teacher about that. Um, maybe next week we could use some of those persuasive positions and maybe have groups or something. I don't know. Oh, mm, that's a good idea. So, anyway, <laughs> the wheels are turning. Um, I'm going to make a quick PowerPoint just when they come in. Have them go ahead and get their stuff out and prepare for the test. And uh, I changed my desks around, so I have them in rows, um, which I absolutely hate. But I also think that the way that I had them, like on a regular day, it just gives them way too much temptation to cheat. And <clears throat> I don't, 
Um, I don't want to have to deal with that. So I think what I'm going to have to do is every time we have a test, just set it up like this and then have my girls at the end of the day, um, maybe tomorrow since we'll probably still be finishing up a test, have them help me move them all back. So, yeah. I'm going to get ready. Oh, and I also, I got this. It's a, it's a Hershey's Chocolate Latte Fordo Coffee Shop Shot Organic. It has 100 milligrams of energy, um, meaning caffeine, obviously. I don't know why I don't just say caffeine. I guess that's to make it sound a little bit better. I don't know what it tastes like. Have you guys ever tried these? I saw it at Family Dollar yesterday, and I asked the woman about it, and she said, like, a lot of people get them and really like them. So I'm going to try it, and it says it's organic. So we're going to try it out. I bet it's nasty. <laughs> um... I'm actually going to put it in the fridge, so maybe it'll be a little bit better. Um, it's only 35 calories, but I mean, how many calories can you really have in something so small to begin with? So yeah, I'm gonna try it out and see, tell you what you got, tell you guys what I think of it. It's definitely not something I could like have every day. <sighs> but anyway, okay, I'm gonna get off here. I'm gonna chill out. I might eat some yogurt, finish my coffee, and get ready for the day. So I'll talk to you guys later. Good morning. It is Friday, August 24th. We made it to another Friday. Oh, you know, I'm not so much excited, like, to not come to school. I'm excited to sleep in, but I actually really enjoy being here. I enjoy the space. I enjoy my room. I enjoy my students. I enjoy my coworkers. So this really is my happy place, but I just need to sleep in a couple of days. Um, but anyway, today... Um, they are just going to be finishing up their tests, and then they're going to start on that Scholastic Scope magazine and, like, their pre-writing. Um, and this is what the handout looks like printed out. So as you can see, just gives them a big space right here and definition my own words. Da-da-da-da-da. Um, and, I'm, like, I think this is, like, for notes, like, when you're, like, actually taking notes on Ethos, Pathos, and Lego. So... I'm not going to make them fill out this part. It's just I want them to find text evidence um, from the article and put it here so that they can um, have something to go off of Monday when they're actually writing their paper. So that's what we're doing today. For bell work, I'm just going to have them choose a journal to turn into me to put into their journals. Um, so, And I'm not even going to make them answer the two questions like I did last week. I just want them to choose a journal and turn it in. We have too much to do. I don't want to waste time. I didn't even make them write anything yesterday. Like, I really didn't have bell work except for, like, prepare for your test. And, um, and so they didn't have to – because I just didn't – the test was long enough. Like, I already knew their, their time was going to be eaten up because of the test. So I also don't want to take time away from them for the test today. And so, yeah. They're just going to choose a journal to turn into me, and I'm just going to take it, and then I'm going to have my girls after school put it into the respective folders. Maybe not until I read them, so maybe that'll be until next week or whatever. So, but anyway, um, one thing that I haven't mentioned to you guys is that I have a Donors Choose project open right now, and um, I'll leave the link below if you would like to just check it out. I'm definitely not expecting you to donate or anything, um, but just maybe if you wanted to share it so it can reach more people. I only have about like $428 left, and I'm trying to get four Chromebooks for my classroom. So while my goal one day is to have like a class set of Chromebooks, um, I'm starting out with just a few at a time just so that, because I mean, if I tried to get like all 30 Chromebooks, which is what I would have to get, I mean, that would be like $10,000 or something like more, It'd be more than that. So um, I'm just trying to get a few at a time so that I can just get those projects funded and then, you know, create another one. So um, if you guys would like to check that out, I'll leave that link below. Um, I still have, at this current time, I edited the first week of school vlog, and I edited the second week of school vlog, and I uploaded them both, but for some reason, the first week of school screwed up and it didn't, like, upload correctly. And so, but the second week of school did, but I didn't want to have the second week of school up in public without the first week of school being public so I just privated that one for now and whenever I get my first week of school fixed and re-uploaded and everything I'll have both of them so both of them are ready I just need to fix the first week of school and so I can open up those and then edit this one so 
Um, yeah, that's all that's up for today. I am going to go make some copies for bell work for next week and just make sure that everything with that is good. And yeah, so I'm going to get up, get off here and get busy and chill out and eat some yogurt and I will talk to you guys.